What's up everyone, it's your soul here, and for those who don't know, I am a backup witness on the Steam blockchain, which means that I've been monitoring carefully the recent controversy and continual back and forth regarding the Steam blockchain and Tron and Justin Sun and CZ of Binance and all these different people wading in on the different opinions and perspectives on what has been taking place recently on Steam regarding hard forks, soft forks, uh, the steamit.com tokens and so on. Uh, there's way too much here for me to cover in a short space of time. I have covered a lot of the details of this in my posts, which you can check out on my Steam blog, uh, which I would recommend you check out at steampeak.com. Uh, and then my username is ura-soul, ura-soul. I'll put a link in the show notes for this episode, my videos. And the reason I'm making this video is because right now there's uh, really a lot of posts happening on Twitter, uh, which started from C CZ of Binance uh, making a post on all of this and asking for uh, evidence to try to understand whether he's been told the truth by Justin Sun at Tron or whether the community are telling the truth. Now, bear in mind, there's something like 50,000 users of Steam, and pretty much, I haven't seen a single one of them, pretty much, saying that um, Justin Sun's version of uh, what the witnesses have put forward with regards to code changes and that kind of thing is actually accurate. Uh, and yet, you know, <laughs> it's basically one person who has bought a large, well, he's bought the company Steam Inc., and is attempting to get access to millions of tokens, Steam tokens, which publicly have been promised to the community for decentralized uses by the previous owner, Ned Scott, um, the previous owner of Steam Inc., uh, have been promised many in many ways, including the 2017 roadmap document from Steam Inc., uh, many video interviews, he's publicly stated these tokens are to be used for decentralized purposes. Uh, now he's backtracking and saying, oh no, there was no contract, you know, um, really... It's really dubious what he's doing, but the bottom line is Justin Sun publicly says that he owns these tokens, he wants access to them, and he even went as far as calling the community witnesses hackers when all they really tried to do was um, in, uphold the agreement that was in place or the, the words of, of uh, Ned Scott prior to this takeover. Takeover happened without any public uh, announcement in advance, without any um, consultation of the community and so on. So it is a long and complicated, drawn-out affair, and I think enough of the top 20 witnesses have already spoken on the actual code that's been put up um, by CZ on uh, Twitter that he wanted comments on. Um, for me to not necessarily need to go into it, the bottom line, I think, in brief, is that the piece of code that Justin Sun sent to CZ, uh, which he claims was intended to freeze out um, tokens that held on Binance and other exchanges because they apparently very dubiously helped uh, Justin Sun try and take over the Steam blockchain, which is a separate, it's not separate issue, it's its own important issue, but I'm not going to go too deeply into that at the moment. I want to stick to one specific point, which I'm coming to. Um, so that, that code, which is up there, basically was never int introduced into the, into the uh, live blockchain, was never presented to be introduced. It was simply prepared in case it was needed to be used. Um, since at that time, no one really knew what was going on, although uh, publicly speaking. Now we've had all these kind of puppet uh, witnesses come in and witness servers come in, basically block producers, and take over the blockchain and replace all of the witnesses that were there um, elected by the community. So you've got 50,000 plus people who've put money into a network, who have voted in certain people to represent them, and now suddenly they've all been ousted and being, they're being called hackers by somebody they don't even know. And... You know, it's obviously, understandably, it's a bit like if you'd voted for your politicians in a government and suddenly an outside character came in, removed all of the politicians, put their own politicians in there and called the old politicians terrorists. Understandably, the people of the country would be very alarmed and they would consider it a hostile takeover and do something to defend themselves, which is basically what's happened. And as it happens, Binance is, um, the tokens held by customers on Binance have been used to facilitate that takeover which is why Binance has re received so much negative press over this and why the community in Steam, who arguably are the biggest um, blockchain crypto-oriented community on the planet, are, are very upset about this. So, you know, this is a complicated subject, but in a sense it's not that complicated. The, the witnesses have already talked to death about it already and made their points known. I don't, still don't think CZ has actually spoken to them. Anyway, the whole point in this video is that I want to draw your attention to a piece of audio which was recorded on the 5th of March in the Steam Steam it, or Steam or Town Hall uh, in Discord, in a Discord server, MSP Waves. So, 
this was a long session with lots of different people speaking. Uh, Roy from Tron spoke in there, who's uh, Justin's uh, agent, business development um, employee, I guess. And many witnesses spoke, uh, other people from the community spoke. But importantly, uh, the managing director of Steam Inc. spoke, who is Eli Powell. And she, or Ellie Powell, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And she had some very interesting things to say, which most people don't seem to have picked up on. So I've taken the liberty here of recording three minutes and 39 seconds of audio from that recording. And I'm just going to play it back to you. And this should clarify... I would say quite strongly what's going on here. So uh, here we go. You know, it's been, I, the last couple of weeks have been the biggest mess I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, everything got started off on the wrong foot. Lots of bad miscommunication, you know, communications coming out of their Asia office. that was like, who's putting this out? They don't know what they're talking about. So there's been a lot of work. Um, and then, you know, Ned still had his hand in things and, uh, actions that were taken were certainly not mine or Justin Welch's recommendations. Justin Welch and I have been doing nothing, nothing but in our power to get them to do the right thing. We are the voice for the community. Um, it's just been a learning curve for Tron, um, but I think we've finally come full circle after a very painful couple of weeks. Um, I think Roy, excellent job trying to, um, you know, get to the happy medium place to negotiate things between the community and Tron. Um, I think we were making finally some real progress. Yeah, it sucks to wake up and see that post. I think, that, again, that was just miscommunication, um, not understanding, you know, what we're trying to do to bridge the gap, to get these two groups to come together, to put the guns down, to finally get to a place where we can all work together. Um, so it's, you know, every day is putting out fires. Um, it's, again, I feel like the core team working on this, we're still just trying to do the best thing we can to figure this out. Um, I don't know where we are. I mean, you know, I see that I was oversaw the mass exodus, mass exodus. That's not true. That's just not true. I mean, if, if I had all that power, that would be, you know, a whole nother story, but I don't. All I can do is just beg and plead for people at the top who have the power to make the right decisions. Um, and that's all I'm doing. That's all I've been doing ever since I got to Steam it is, you know, trying to get Ned, like, Ned, you can't do this. Like, why are you doing this? This is suicide. And, you know, we're kind of in that same boat, but I'm hoping we can really quickly course correct and, you know, dear God, find a, a way that we can all work together. What, but I don't, what, I mean, what I found I, fascinating, Eli, is that through all this uh, turmoil, you didn't reach out to the witnesses at all since the 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 acquisition happened um and we were like left out from this discussion like uh, like secondhand trash or something whereas we are the elected witnesses of this blockchain and uh we weren't included in any of your discussions so i don't know how you can come here and say you're overwhelmed and trying to get everybody together and the whole powers blah 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 it's for me it's, it's just nonsense i get that and basically you know we were in a holding pattern on what we could communicate or not um because i they didn't know what they were doing at the time they did there wasn't a plan in place and i wasn't at liberty to reach back out meanwhile i am telling them guys we have a huge problem here this will happen they will take everything from, they will lock up the stake that you just bought. No, 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 we've got to buy some time. You know, we were going to meet with them in San Francisco, which we did. Um, but, you know, I can only say so many things and beat a dead horse. And if people don't take my advice, and uh, again, I don't own that stake. So, so it was out of my hands. Right, so there you go. She's literally saying there that she was telling, I mean, she says guys, she doesn't say exactly who she's talking about. But she says the stake that you just bought. Well, who bought the stake? Tron. So she's talking about Tron. She's saying that she told Tron they will buy, they will, meaning the community, will lock up your stake. Uh, and this was before, presumably before they actually bought it. Um, and, and the response was, no, 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 we're going to buy some time. That's what the, the, the head person at Steam Inc. is stating publicly here. So first of all, 
that completely really contradicts the narrative presented by Justin Sun, where he's tried to claim, you know, shock and awe that this has happened. Um, and that, you know, it must be dubious hackers that have taken these tokens. Like, oh my God, what's happening? I don't understand. We have to take immediate action. There's hackers trying to take over the network. He was warned by the head person at Steemit that this would happen, first of all, because she knew that the tokens had been for four, three or four years basically promised to be decentralized to the community, as stated in the 2017 roadmap that's still on Steam.com, Steam.io. So then, further to that, she says that they said that their response to that was, we're just going to buy some time, as if that's going to solve the problem. Well, what does that mean? How, how could buying some time solve the problem, and what, how could they buy some time? Well, to my mind, if we look at their actions, really, it all makes sense. The concern was that the witnesses would try to freeze the accounts out or the tokens out. Um, I mean, perhaps they thought that it would happen on a permanent basis. That isn't actually what happened. The witnesses only temporarily froze the accounts so that we could negotiate, or they, the top 20 uh, witnesses in the Steam community, could negotiate with Tron to try to understand what was happening since we hadn't really been informed of any of the details. And many, many people's hard-earned money is invested in this blockchain. Actually, in total, more than Justin Sun has invested. So the witnesses felt uh, an obligation to the community to take action, to try to make sure that, in a sense, their, their interests weren't being taken over by hackers in the form of Tron and, as it happens, Ned. Um, so given that the, this freeze took place and Tron were trying to you know, buy time to stop that happening, what's the, what could they do to buy time? Well... They could, for example, tell some exchanges that hackers had tried to take over the, the blockchain and so on, and basically then use, as as did happen, get the exchanges to use their customers' tokens to vote support of the Steemit accounts that, that Justin Sun and Steemit told them to use. So this was presumably, quite, I would say, quite clearly orchestrated and planned as a method of attempting to mislead, let's say, or perhaps work with Binance and other exchanges um, to try to buy time in order to put in a hard fork which would prevent the community from taking the action which Tron had been warned about in advance. So I would say, uh, you know, this is, in light of this comment from uh, Eli or Ellie, this is quite clear, really, I would say, what what's going on here. And it does really make Justin Sun out to be um, very deceptive and despite his attempts to be friendly and I've I myself have listened to most of the things he said publicly and I wanted to like him I wanted to kind of you know give him the benefit of the doubt and see if he could help out the Steam blockchain and uh, you know co-benefit Tron and Steam it at the same time I, I can't overlook the reality that this is going on and and the concern of the uh, top 20 witnesses and most of the community is basically that if they were to completely release control of the blockchain to Tron, then Tron would effectively change the rules for powering down tokens, as they've been trying to pressure the community to do, try to turn the 13-week power down period, uh, which would, which is the process that we currently need to go to to freeze or to unfreeze uh, tokens that have been locked up for to, to give them governance rights or to to be able to use those votes, uh, those tokens for voting on the on the blockchain. They've tried to push to have that 13-week period reduced, so let's say three or four days or a short period, which they've tried to say we should be given to the um, to the exchanges in order to correct the situation where they've powered up these tokens and locked them up in order to vote to help Tron out. The, the issue, well, there's many issues with that, but one of the issues is people are concerned that should the um, powering down period be reduced to that short period of time, then Tron would power down all of Steam Inc.'s tokens and then sell them which would, you know, cause complete chaos, first of all. Secondly, it would completely um, negate the roadmap that was laid out and that the community had invested in many cases on the basis of, um, you know, it's huge, huge, huge risk for the community for that to happen and amongst other risks as well. So the concern is that if, if the demands that Tron were making uh, were acted upon, then Tron would also use that to power down and sell their stake, which they actually, Justin actually said in the first private communication with the witnesses, which was across the Zoom uh, system, which is also on YouTube. I'll link to that in the show notes for this video. Uh, he actually says, I want to get out now and sell my stake as quickly as possible. So he's basically said his intention is to do what the community are worried about him doing and that they don't want him to do. And so, you know, there's several issues here, but one of them is, first of all, Justin is, 
misleading CZ, I would say, from what I can understand from CZ's tweets, uh, assuming that they weren't working together on this. Um, number two, uh, the actual tokens involved, there's some debate over you know, what should happen to those tokens based on the fact that Ned, I mean, it seems to me, honestly, like he's lying publicly by saying there was no pre-mine in some of his comments, uh, which is just not true. Um, and, you know, he's saying, oh, well, the company owns those tokens and can do what he wants with them, um, despite which, you know, OK, that's, there's an argument for that. But on the other hand, he has been promising for many years that these tokens would be decentralized. They would not be sold effectively. Um, so he's made, I would say, misrepresentations to the world about um, the nature of investment in Steam. And now he's taken proceeds from the sale of uh, the company, which gained value in response to some of the claims he was making and taken them for taking that money for himself so effectively you know there's a, definitely an argument to be made for that to be fraud um and we it remains to be seen exactly the legal outcome of that i know that some of the legal people on steam amongst the community are working on this uh possibly launching a class action lawsuit or, or other things um but the bottom line here is i think that there's a lot of lies being told and i would say justin's told some lies to the community i would say that ned's told also many lies to the community they've tried to spin them in a way that makes it look like they're not lying and i think when you call a community elected group of mostly very intelligent people who are very knowledgeable about, about blockchain uh from a community of mostly very intelligent knowledgeable people about blockchain of fifty thousand plus people when you try to spin it that they're like terrorist hackers when really all they're doing is upholding the community values then you should expect some kickback from that some fight back and uh, I would like the world to pay attention to this and particularly this recording that I've posted here from Eli, uh, because I feel like it really does clarify a lot of the spin and um, misdirection that's been taking place here. So thanks a lot for listening. And uh, please do pass this on to anyone and everyone who's interested in this subject, perhaps, uh, you know, Bitcoin, uh, crypto related media sources, people at Binance, Steam, whoever, you know, who may be interested. And let's try and resolve this as best we can, as quickly as we can with as little pain as we can in a way that you know helps the steam community and maybe the tron community to coexist and grow without having to have any more conflict until next time peace